Mary. Can I go over to your place now? I just bought a cake for Bobby. This famous pastry chef downtown made it especially for him. Oh, I am sure Bobby would just love it. Oh, hello, Mom. <laughs> Thanks. Um, just asking, but did you buy anything for Aaron? Huh? For Aaron? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> I only got enough for Bobby. I see. Mom, I keep telling you, Bobby is not my only child. You do realize that I have a daughter, too. Your granddaughter, Erin? Or have you forgotten? Don't you think it would hurt Erin's feelings if you just buy something for Bobby? I'm sorry, but if you don't have something for the both of them, I can't accept it. Uh-huh, but I didn't buy her any. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I can't go back and order it again. I reserved this days before. Besides, why should Bobby have to sit back and go along with it? Oh, poor Bobby. You have to give priority to your eldest. The younger must be patient and wait her turn. That's how it's always been. If you don't teach them a little patience, she'll grow up to be a spoiled little brat. What you're saying is really contradictory. You're spoiling Bobby. I would appreciate it if you would stop. You're always doting over Bobby and completely ignoring Aaron. You're also constantly giving Bobby allowances and again, not a dime for Aaron. Also, nothing for Aaron on her birthday or Christmas, only for Bobby. What's up with that? Don't you see that Aaron is hurt by your actions? I can't understand why you can't treat them equally. They are both your grandchildren for Pete's sake. I can't help it. Boys are so much more affectionate. I just can't force myself to have affection for a child I don't feel as attractive. And you know girls, they grow up and get married. They become complete strangers after they grow up. Oh, it's just a waste of time, spent too much energy on them. And Erin, sometimes I don't even know if she's in the room, she's so quiet. A waste of time? What exactly do you mean by that? I didn't really need a second grandchild. Bobby was adequate. <laughs> what I mean is, you shouldn't have had Erin. This whole having another child thing was just a total waste of time. That's what I'm saying. Anyways, girls eventually leave home. They're of no use. Yes, no need for girls. To be honest, Bobby is enough for me. I would much rather spend all my money on Bobby. I cannot believe your attitude. That's such an awful thing to say. Both Bobby and Aaron are my children and we love them dearly. Both of them are dear to us. I can't stand by and listen to you call my child a waste or no use. That's just plain cruel. If you intend to ignore or show disdain toward Aaron, you are not welcome in our home. But it's the truth, isn't it? I mean, we can clearly see that Bobby is negatively impacted by having a younger sister. Because of Aaron, my poor grandson had to give up on attending that private school and had to settle for that mediocre public school. You said if you didn't do that, you wouldn't be able to send both of them to university. You got it all wrong, mother. I think your memory is a little out of whack. I remember I explained all that to you in detail several times. The only person that wanted him to go to a private school was you. It was Bobby's wish to go to a public school. He didn't want to part with his friends, some of them he's known since kindergarten. I don't intend to force him to a school he has no desire of attending. But for his future, he should go to a good school. Oh, think ahead, would you? Besides, he should stop seeing those second-rate kids. Ugh, nothing good will come of keeping such a friendship going, in my opinion. If you can't afford it, all you have to do is not send Aaron to college. Simple as that. <sighs> Girls don't need a higher education. What use is it? Are you still living in the 1950s or something? <sighs> do you really think your way of thinking passes in this day and age? And for your information, Aaron is not the reason we can't afford a private school. We were never that well off to begin with. Do you realize how much tuition is at that private school? Add in transportation costs, extracurricular activities, there are all kinds of additional expenses involved. <sighs> Please don't interfere with our personal family matters. I'm just saying this because I'm his grandmother and I worry about his future. Oh, he shouldn't have to suffer in silence for the sake of a useless younger sister. Oh, poor Bobby. 
if you're so concerned about transportation, you should have him stay at my place and have him go to school from here. That school is very close to our home, you know. Oh, I see where you're going with this. You want him to live with you, is that it? So, you want him to go to that private school, but your actual motive is for him to live with you. Just thinking about his future. <laughs> yeah, right. Obviously, you're only thinking about yourself. Yes, that's right. That's the sensible way, don't you agree? I'll take good care of Bobby. You can lavish all your affection on Aaron. It's a win-win situation. That way, we'll be able to give them all the affection they need on an equal basis. I'm sorry, but we seem to be on completely different wavelengths. I'm going to say this one last time. Bobby will not be attending a private school, nor is he going to be living with you. If you ever say anything derogatory or cruel to Aaron ever again, you will never set foot in our home again. Do I make myself clear? Oh, all right, all right. Oh, calm down. My, what an unreasonable daughter-in-law. Hello? Mary! Would you please pick up? Aren't you home? Where are you? Oh, this key doesn't seem to work. I can't get in. Hello, mother? What's up? You didn't mention you were stopping by today. Is there something I can help you with? Yes, oh, I stopped by to drop off some clothes for Bobby. Picked out some nice items at the department store. And don't worry, I bought some things for Aaron too. If you're not home now, I can come back later. Uh, we won't be returning to that house anymore. We already moved out. Huh? Y you moved out? Out of this house? Why did you do that? <laughs> oh, come on, please. Don't act all innocent. Did you really forget what you've been doing the last month? I warned you many times, mother. But you didn't listen. <laughs> you went ahead and made an extra key. You come to our house without telling us first. And what's more, you continue to ignore Aaron. My husband asked you repeatedly and you finally brought a gift for Aaron, but you brought Bobby this wonderful chocolate cake, but for Aaron, a Snickers bar? Really? Have you no compassion? She was really hurt by that, you know. You just ignored all my warnings. No matter how many times I explained things to you, it just went in one ear and came out the other. And that's why you just moved out without even telling me? Oh, what a complete waste of money. Yes, you're right about that. It was way over our budget, and packing all of our stuff and moving out into the new place was not exactly fun. But to be honest, the kids and I are quite relieved. The kids are smiling again. They no longer have to suffer from your constant presence and rudeness. The amount of stress you caused our family this past month is immeasurable. Me? Uh, causing stress? That's right. So we decided that until both Bobby and Aaron insist that we see you, which I honestly don't see happening, I'm sorry, but we all decided that we would no longer see you. Needless to say, you're not welcome at our new home. If you even think about coming to the kids' school, I will alert the authorities. Oh, you, you can't do this. Are you saying you're taking my grandson away from me? Taking him away? <laughs> it's Bobby that doesn't want to see you. You don't seem to care when to show up. Whether he's studying for an exam or just hanging out with friends, you barge in unannounced. Then you disparage his younger sister right in front of him and his friends, going on and on about taking that entrance exam for that private school that he doesn't even want to go to, and berating him for having such loser friends. I don't blame him for not wanting to see you. He told me he doesn't even want to see Grandma's face for a while. You're lying. Bobby would never say such a thing about me. Okay. Then why don't you ask him yourself? I'm sure you already know his line contact. Oh, you can be sure I'll do that. Bobby wouldn't dare say such a thing. He would be more than happy to come and live with me. If he says he's willing to come and live with me and attend that private school, I'll invite him over right away. Are you okay with that? Sure, do as you like. Bobby? Are you there? You're on my side, aren't you, Bobby? I heard that you moved out. Oh, I'm sure your mother forced you to move. Oh, how could she do that to my dear grandson? 
You should really think about your future and cut ties with that awful family, especially your mother. You're welcome to come and live with me anytime. If you do, I'll make sure you can go to that private school. I guarantee it. Ah, Grandma, how many times do I have to keep repeating myself? I told you a hundred million times that I have no intention of going to private school. I'm really getting tired of this. Why won't you listen? It's like I'm talking to a wall, for God's sake. Bobby, how could you say that to your grandmother? I'm just saying this because I'm concerned about your future. You would be much happier if you come and live with me. Please, give me a break, Grandma. I don't want some old fogey deciding my future. Me? Living with an old hag like you? I mean, please. I just can't picture it. Uh huh? I think you really are hard of hearing. Like I said, I have no intention of living with a nagging old hag. I mean, what for? Think about it. You live pretty far away, and I won't be able to see my friends anymore. I really don't see the upside to all this. And that house is old. Bugs all over that old dump. The place stinks, to be honest. What's more, there are no malls or even a Starbucks nearby, and you expect me to live in such a place with the Wicked Witch of the North? Spare me! It's like I'm being punished or something. Punished? Yeah, it's like I'm being penalized for something. What did I do to deserve this? At the old place, you would barge in all of a sudden whether I was doing my homework or just watching a movie with Aaron. You start up with your nonsense, blabbering on and on about me attending some far-off school or bringing me sweets I don't even like? To be honest, I prefer Snickers. I just got so sick of it. Live with you. God, no way. No thanks. Uh, no? Why? Why would you say that? I thought... You want to know the truth? Okay, I'll say it straight out. I despise you. A nagging old lady. That's all you are. Huh? D despite? But, uh, but why? For one, because you pick on Mom and Aaron. How many times has Mom told you not to be rude to Aaron? But no! You ignore her and keep disparaging her. You treat her like trash! That's why I despise you. Well, I love my little sister, and I don't want anything to do with an old hag like you. Huh? You're not serious. But I treated you so well. Bought you all those gifts? Showered you with love? Yeah, well, when I was a kid, I was happy to get stuff from you. But you never give anything to Aaron. And when I get something, she really looks sad. When I first learned that you were shunning Aaron, well, that's when I started to despise you. So please, just leave our family alone, would you? And don't come to our new home. You're not welcome. No, you, you can't speak to your grandmother like that. That will just not do. Oh, you're my precious grandson. You're the one who will take after this household. See, you're always going off on your own. I'm going to decide my future, and nobody else, much less an old witch like you. I will never allow you to make Aaron feel like that again. But you can't just... Anyway, I'm busy. Got to unpack my things and clean up my new room. Don't go calling us anymore. We want nothing to do with you, old lady. Huh? Are you joking? Please, wait. Please, Bobby! After Bobby told her off, Grandma frantically tried to find our new home. She went as far as going to Bobby's school and tried to get him to come home with her. The situation got out of hand, and his friends pulled the alarm bell, causing the police to intervene. Although no serious charges were brought, they gave her a severe reprimand for her actions. Bobby was so pissed off, he yelled, Get out of here, you old witch, in front of the whole school. <laughs> uh, that outburst from Bobby really hit her hard. As for me, I told her, if she ever comes anywhere near Bobby again, I plan to take some sort of legal action against her. That seemed to do the trick. After that, we didn't hear from her again. Because of that, our family atmosphere changed drastically for the better. Bobby and Aaron both seem much more positive in their daily lives. Maybe we should have moved out a lot sooner. Steve, you're wasting your time at home again, aren't you? What? What do you mean? I'm not wasting my time. I'm working right now. Stop lying. What do you mean by work? You're just playing games on your computer all day. No, I'm not. It's true that I'm a nerd and I like playing games, but I don't spend the whole day playing games. I just work from home, as I've explained many times to you before. Quit talking out of your butt. 
No one would be dumb enough to believe a lie that obvious. But I'm telling the truth. I have something to tell you. I need you to pack up your things and move out of the house. What? What do you mean? I've decided to go back to mom and dad's house, so I need you to move out and make room for me. What? You're moving back? Are you visiting? No. I got divorced, so I'm moving back in with my kids. Divorce? Seriously? Yeah, so I need you to move out. I and my child are going to live there, so... Just wait a minute! Why do I have to move out? That's unfair! I'm the firstborn, so I have the right to live there. On top of that, I don't have the responsibility to raise a hobo like you, and I don't want you influencing my kids. So I need you to move out and sustain yourself. Your argument is making absolutely no sense. Ever since our parents died, I'm the one who's taking care of this house. You told me on the phone after mom's funeral, you're the oldest boy, so you have to take care of the house now. And when dad died, you split all of his property without any permission into his land and money. You took all of the money, didn't you? All I got was this land and this house. You just left after that. Isn't it unfair for you to just come back whenever you want to? It is not. I'm the oldest, so whatever I say goes. Besides, rather than being kept by an unemployed lazy person like you, I, the smart and responsible child taking good care, would make mom happier too. I can't believe you. If you think you can just spend the rest of your life playing games, clinging on to what dad left behind for you, you're dead wrong. I bet all the money he left for you is about to run out. Why won't you listen to me? I'm telling you that I have a job. You took most of the money he left behind anyways. Just stop lying. Just get over it and live on your own. This is for your own good. You'll never become a real man if you don't sustain yourself. Get out of the house, you hobo. And if you don't go out right now, I'm breaking all of your game consoles. And I'll throw all your stuff out the window. Fine. It's surprising how a person who can't even have a proper discussion was able to get married. But I don't want you to come here and go crazy. And I definitely don't want you to break any of my stuff. So I'll leave. But I'm not going to help you with anything after I leave. Why would I ever want a hobo's help? <laughs> I don't care about you. Just get out of the house. I'll protect the house. <laughs> up right now. How many times do you think I've called you? Don't ignore me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was too focused on my games. I didn't notice. Quit lying. I've been calling for the past month. There's no way you've been playing games this whole time. Besides, where would a hobo like you play games? You really should stop lying. Wow, you're as dumb as always. Do you really still believe that I'm unemployed? <laughs> How are you so ignorant? <laughs> How could I be calling you if I was homeless? I already bought a new apartment and moved in. I've been ignoring your calls on purpose, by the way. You're such a liar. You never have the money to get your own place. I bet you're staying at a motel, you worthless piece of crap. Whatever. I don't need you to understand. Not that I expect you to, given that I've been telling you so many times. Think whatever you want. Now what do you want? I wouldn't expect you to call me to check on how well off I am. That's right. I texted you earlier, but it's about the bills. I haven't been able to use electricity for a while now, and the water stopped too. Oh yeah, I heard your voice message about that. You were saying the electricity and gas stopped, and now the water stopped? <laughs> wow, I mean, good luck. <laughs> Stop laughing. Why did it all stop? What happened? Isn't it obvious? Maybe it's because you haven't been paying the bills. What? Aren't they being paid? Why would I be paying? I haven't paid it since I moved out. Not you! The bills! Aren't they being deposited from Dad's inheritance? I really don't understand what you're saying. What's Dad's inheritance? There is no inheritance anymore. What? What do you mean? What did you do? I don't have any of the money that he left behind anymore. 
Mom and Dad both entered a nursing home before they died, so I paid for their bills to go there, and the fees for the funeral. It wasn't much to begin with, since you took most of it in the first place. How have you been staying alive then? You're a hobo without any spare money either. Is it not obvious that I've been paying my own bills with my own money? For the thousandth time, I work from home. Besides, even if I were to still have some money from Dad left, why would you get to use it? I mean, it's odd that you have the house right now anyways. You little... I thought I could live here for free! Fine, I'll pay you the utility bills. Make sure to do the paperwork to change the billing address to mine. Right now. What? Why me? I'm too lazy for that. Ugh, quit complaining and do it! Make sure I can use the tap and electricity right now. I don't think there's any point in doing that, though. That house isn't owned by me anymore. What? When I left the house, I put the house and land up for sale. You won't be able to stay there for long. What? You put it up for sale? I heard it was already bought. You should really look for a new home. What on earth were you thinking? Why would you sell Dad's property just by yourself like that? I won't allow that! I don't need your permission. The rights to the house were left behind for me. It's all mine, so I can do whatever I want. You were just born and raised there. You have no rights to it. <laughs> but you can't just tell me to move out of my house like that. I was just starting to settle in. Do you not remember what you did to me? <laughs> you told me to leave. But you don't want me to tell you to leave. How odd. You're making me crack up, sis. <laughs> Besides, how are you settling in? It's a house without any gas or water. <laughs> We have different circumstances. I'm raising children on my own. I'm barely getting by. Are you just going to throw me and my kids onto the streets? You're heartless. Which one of us is heartless? When mom and dad got sick and needed your help, I called you so many times, but all you said was, I'm busy right now. You didn't come even once to visit or help. You didn't even show up to the funeral and you just show up after they're dead to take all of the money. And now you're here to take the house because you're the oldest sibling, and you just threw me onto the streets. Tell me, which one of us is heartless? Shut up! Don't talk back to me! You're my younger brother! You listen to what your older sister says! What kind of adult uses that as an excuse to do whatever they want? <laughs> I'm embarrassed to even be related to you. Just be quiet! Take down the offer for the house, or buy it back and give the rights to me. No way! <laughs> what good does that do for me? Why do I have to do that for the lady who kicked me out of it in the first place? It's already been bought, so no can do! <laughs> then give me the room you're living in right now! I and my kids are gonna live there. You have money, just get a new apartment! How much of a bully are you? <laughs> Wah, my big sister's being mean to me! <laughs> you kicked me out of the house I was taking care of, and now you want to take over the new apartment I just bought? Who's the homeless one now? <laughs> I'm so scared of you! <laughs> Quit fooling around! I'm serious! You're serious? I thought you were joking! <laughs> You're trying to take my house like a kid would take her brother's toy! You really are crazy! <laughs> I don't care which, but either give me your room or buy back the house. I have children with me. Do you not care what happens to them? Quit using your kids to your advantage. I actually feel horrible for them. You know, my nieces don't have anything to do with this, so I already made a call about this. A call? What on earth did you do? I called your husband. He's already on his way. What? What the hell? You can't just do that! I heard that you actually haven't gotten divorced yet. You just ran out of the house with the kids because he was planning to divorce you, right? And the reason is that you cheated on him, correct? You really are a piece of trash. You have nothing to do with this! How could you contact him without my permission? Because I care about the well-being of your kids. Plus, I need you to move out of that house. It's not ours anymore. Your husband told me that he's been desperately looking for you and your kids. 
and he knew that you and I didn't get along, so he assumed that you didn't come over to my house. He said he never would have expected you to kick me out so you could live there. Talk about coincidence, am I right? I can't believe you! He'll divorce me if he finds me! He's planning on suing me and taking the kids with him too! Of course he is. <laughs> he has the right to do all of that. Please, let me hide. Let me hide at your place. I mean us. No way. <laughs> I decided not to ever let you enter my house again. I can't afford to have you take over again. <laughs> okay, I won't. I'll apologize for everything I did. Just please help me this once. No way. <laughs> I'm not getting involved in this. See ya. Hey, wait. Steve! <laughs> After that, my sister tried to run away with her kids, but she was caught by her husband and his parents, and they all went back to the married couple's house. They got a lawyer and soon divorced. It turned out that my sister was really cheating, so she ended up paying 20,000 bucks for compensation. The rights to her kids were taken as well, and she was kicked out with nothing left. I heard she went to the guy she cheated with after that, but she asked him to pay part of the fees, and they got into a big fight. She was kicked out of that house too, and no one knows where she is now. It's a fitting ending for my sister. She tried to take my house, but everything was taken from her. I'm personally happy with being able to sell the house. It was hard to let go of because of all the memories I had with my parents, but it was way too big to live alone in. And I'm fine as long as the new owners treat it well. I used the money from that to renew my parents' graves, so I'm sure they're happy with the decision, too. Um, Hannah? Lucy's in front of my house. What happened? Oh, sorry, Claire. I forgot to tell you. Thanks for noticing, though. So what on earth is going on? What's Lucy doing outside my house at this time? And how long has she been out there? She's shivering. Um, we left the house at 5.30 this morning, so I must have left her there at about 6. What? So she'd been outside my house for over an hour? It might be summer, but the mornings are still cold, you know? Leaving a four-year-old outside like that. Have you lost your mind? And not just the cold, what if she got abducted? Well, nothing happened, did it? What's the problem? Don't get mad over something so trivial. Sorry it's so sudden, but I want you to look after Lucy for me. For about three days starting today. What? Three days starting today? You can't just bring this all on me out of nowhere. Whoopsies, I already left her. Plus, my husband's away on business. I'm going on vacation now. You're the only one I can count on, Claire. Surely you'll help me as a favor between neighbors, please? No, why can't you just leave her with your parents? Your husband's parents only live 30 minutes away by car. That's what you said before, right? I can't do that, because I'm going vacation with my darling. Huh? What does that mean? Isn't your husband away on business? If you're going as a couple, you could take Lucy with you. I can't do that. Darling's not my husband. He's my boyfriend. Huh? Your boyfriend? So basically that means you're having an affair? That's why I can't tell my husband or his parents. You too, Claire. Don't tell anyone, okay? But that's wrong. And the thing you dump your daughter on someone else to go on vacation? You can't do things like this, Hannah. Oh, don't be so stubborn. Besides, my husband's always going to strip clubs and hang out with younger women. I have to blow off some steam myself and sometimes too, you know? <laughs> I basically got my husband's approval. So chill, it's fine. Somehow, I don't believe that. I won't say anything about your marriage this time. But please, don't get me wrapped up in your mess ever again. I feel like I'm aiding and abetting a crime and I'm not comfortable with it. Wow, you're so cold. Friends have to watch each other's backs, you know. Anyways, I already got on the bullet train so I can't come home now. Take good care of Lucy for me. No, not take good care of Lucy for me. And hey, if you want me to look after her for three days, why doesn't she have anything with her? Wear her clean clothes, money for food. And what do you plan on doing about the nursery? Whoops, I forgot to give her clean clothes. Whatever, it's fine. Just let her wear your kid's clothes, okay? As for the nursery, just take her along with your kid. Food expenses for a four-year-old are no big deal. Include them as a service for me this time, okay? I'll buy you a souvenir. My kid's clothes? My kid is two years old. They won't fit her. And are you saying you'll be paying for food expenses? 
What a tightwad. If your kid's clothes don't fit her, just have her wear adult ones for now. And that's not even half of it. What about allergies? Does she have any? What about our medicine book? Her health insurance card? What am I supposed to do if something happens to her? Oh, come on. It's just three days. She'll be fine. You worry too much. That's not the point. Anyway, I can't look after her. If you don't come back and collect her, I'll take her to your husband's parents' place. Tell me their phone number. What? But if I told you, they'd find out about my affair. I don't want to get divorced, so no, I won't be telling you. Be serious. Ugh, you put me in such a difficult spot. That may be so, but I can't come back now, so no can do. Just give up and look after her, okay? No, you really need to start taking this seriously. At least give me some emergency contact details, even if it's just your own parents' number. Whoopsie, looks like my phone's battery's about to die. Sorry, gotta go. Take good care of Lucy for me. Toodles. Wait, Hannah? I can't do this. <coughs> hey, Claire. Sorry I kept you waiting. I can come home soon. I got you lots of souvenirs. Hannah, what have you been doing this whole time? I was ringing you constantly, but you didn't pick up once. Sorry. <laughs> the notifications were annoying, so I never really blocked you. You blocked me. Weren't you worried about Lucy? What if she'd been in danger? You force your child on someone else, then ignore them when they try to contact you. Because you're so absorbed in your sordid little lover's vacation. Have you no shame? You're absolutely despicable. God, you're such a drama queen. Nothing happened in the end, did it? I'm on my way to pick her up now, so just take a chill pill, okay? Thanks for watching her for me these three days. Thanks to you, we had an amazing time vacation. I'm heading back on the bullet train now, so wait with my daughter. Your husband came and took her ages ago. Apparently they moved house. Huh? I got in touch with your husband and his parents the day you dumped her on me. He came back from his business trip to collect her. She's at his parents' place now. Your husband said he's moving out of the house and going to live with his parents. They were all pretty angry. What? Why? How did you contact my husband? I didn't give you his number, did it? Did I? I asked everyone in the neighborhood, including your other mom friends. Eventually, when I explained the situation to the nursery teacher, he gave me your husband's number. What have you done? I told you not to tell my husband or his parents. Who do you think you are to contact them like this? And I told you, didn't I? That without change of a clothes, her insurance card, her medicine book, or not knowing whether she had any allergies, I couldn't look after your daughter for three days. I told you it was inconvenient, didn't I? And I told you it was fine. God, you're such a nervous wreck. I told you three days was no big deal. You didn't know what might happen, did you? Who did you expect to take responsibility if something awful happened? I wasn't prepared to take that on if you wouldn't even cover food expenses. Shouldn't her being with her own father and grandparents give you more peace of mind? It does, but I told you I couldn't do that this time. If my husband knew I was on vacation with my boyfriend, he would divorce me. Oh yeah, I told your husband about your lover's vacation. What? While I was explaining to him why I had Lucy, I thought it'd be easier to show him our messages on here. You know how I told you he was moving in with his parents? It's so he can prepare for the divorce. No, 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 no! Why did you tell him? Ugh, I mean, who does this? I only told him because he asked me. Why did you think I wouldn't tell him in the first place? You're disgusting. You put on a timid act and tricked me. I can't believe you'd be so cowardly. Which part is cowardly? I was obviously going to contact your guardian. Actually, I think it's far more cowardly and disgusting to force me to watch your daughter because you look down on me and think I'm timid. While you go on a sordid vacation with your lover. Just shut up. If he divorces me, I'm taking you to court. I'm going to tell all her friends that you did and have you ostracized. I'll see to it no one ever speaks to you again. I don't think you're going to be able to do that, Hannah. They're all on my side after all. What? I did just tell you, but I got your husband's number by asking around the neighborhood, including your mom friends. I told them everything and asked for their help, so everyone knows all about your affair. What? You went blabbing to everyone in the neighborhood too? You're scum! Quit joking around! Go and undo it immediately! Even if you bark orders at me, I've already told them, so that's impossible. I mean, it is true. Kinda looks like you might get ostracized, huh? No, you can't do this! I'm a stay-at-home housewife!
wife. If he divorces me, I won't be able to live. I can't find work after all this time. And my friends abandon me too. Oh my god, I... Please, can't you make my husband and friends come round somehow? Tell them it was a joke or that you got it all wrong. I don't want to bug them any more than I already have, so no can do. This isn't my problem anymore. You have to help me, please. I'll do anything. No can do. How about giving up and preparing yourself for what's coming instead? Oh no, whoopsies. Looks like my phone's battery's about to die. Sorry, toodles. No, please, wait, Claire. After that, Hannah and her lover were caught by her husband, who was waiting for them at the station. They got a divorce and she had to pay a huge amount of settlement money. Of course, her husband won custody rights over Lucy, and she was raised with love and care at his parents' house. Hannah, no longer having anywhere to live, went to stay at her lover's apartment, but they started getting to fights over the settlement money she was forced to pay. They broke up and she was homeless once more. She was ostracized by all of her old friends who were now ignoring her. Eventually, she came over and started throwing garbage at my house out of resentment for me. But just as she did that, a patrolling police officer happened to walk by. She was caught red-handed and taken away in handcuffs. Can you imagine? She resented me so much to the point of harassment after treating me like a daycare center to enable her affair. I don't understand how her mind works at all. Hey sis, it's Mako. Long time no see! Huh? Mako? How did you get my number? I blocked you and even got a new phone. So a little birdie told me something. Hey wait, isn't getting a new phone without telling me a little mean? Even though I'm your one and only adorable little sister? Huh? Adorable? I haven't thought of you as adorable even once. I don't even think of you as my sister anymore. What? Why? You're horrible. How is that horrible? Have you forgotten what you did? You stole my fiance four years ago. Wow, are you still holding a grudge over that? That's like ancient history. And I told you I was sorry. Can't we put the past behind us? Don't be ridiculous. Like hell, I'm gonna forgive you. You stole my fiance right before our wedding. Do you know how difficult my life became because of you? You caused his parents all sorts of trouble because he broke off the engagement. And since we worked at the same company, everyone was constantly gossiping about us. It became so hard to be there, I ended up changing jobs. I went through so much. Wow, really? I had no idea. Seriously, stop screwing me around. I blocked you because I didn't want to see your face anymore. Then moved house and cut all ties. That's how much I hate you. You still haven't forgiven me, even though I apologized? You're so petty. Anyway, Kenichi's the one who came on to me. Isn't it unreasonable to only be angry with me? But you were inviting him out all the time before that. You were all over him, even though you knew he was my fiancé. Whatever, it's in the past now. More importantly, I have some news for you. More importantly, ugh, you're vile. What news? I'm getting married! We got engaged just the other week. Cool, that's nice. Um, excuse me, what kind of reaction is that? You could seem a little more pleased for me. What? Why would I be pleased? I already cut you out of my life. Whether you get married or you get pregnant, I don't care. You're so cold. I know you're too old to find a husband for yourself now. So I was going to invite you to my wedding. To think I worked so hard to find your contact details. You didn't have to do that. Leave me alone. So you're marrying Kenichi? Great. I hope you're happy together. Huh? I'm not marrying Kenichi, lol. Me and him broke up ages ago. Stealing him from you was fun enough, but he was broke after paying you compensation for breaking off the engagement. Plus, he was such a bore. I dumped him straight away, lol. I'm marrying someone else. Oh cool, you're free to do as you please. I'm gonna send you a wedding invite. What's your address? What? No way am I telling you. Don't you know what cutting you out of my life means? 
I never want to see you again. Do you understand? How could you say such a thing? Oh, I know how. Because you're jealous of me. What? You're jealous that your little sister's getting married before you, right? My poor sister failed to get married because her fiance abandoned her. You and Kenichi would have been married by now, wouldn't you? LOL. Oopsie, sorry. Cringe. I'm hardly jealous. I wouldn't want to be the kind of scumbag who'd cheat on me with my sister anyway. You're just coping, you salty loser. Anyways, get excited about my wedding. I'll introduce you to some hot guys if you want. LOL. I'll pass. I won't be going. Oh, don't be like that. Just come. I've got a big surprise for you. You're going to be amazed. LOL. You better be there. Ugh, sis! Why didn't you reply to my wedding invite? Mom and Dad are ignoring me too. Why? Why? Isn't it obvious? Didn't Mom and Dad disown you over what happened with Kenichi? My invite turned up in the mail at work for some reason. I put it straight through the shredder without even opening it. What? Why would you? I worked so hard writing that. You're so irritating. Will you give it a rest already? Never contact me again. LOL, that's fine. Because I'm pretty sure you're gonna be the one contacting me pretty soon. What? Why would I contact you? About the surprise I mentioned before. Okay, fine, I'll spill the beans. Can you guess what it is if I say the name Takaki Ota? Huh? How do you know his name? Takaki's your current fiancé, isn't he? Sorry, sis. Looks like I stole your fiancé again! Huh? What are you talking about? Wow, you still don't get it? You got abandoned by your fiancé again! Has Takaki messaged you lately? No, I didn't. And no, he hasn't. Wait, did you... Who do you think I'm with right now? Your fiancé! You're such a moron for taking this long to figure it out! No, my wedding's today. Huh? What are you talking about, LOL? My wedding is today. My fiancé... No, my husband... Who stood right next to me. They're just making the closing preparations for the ceremony and getting the banquet ready. What? Your wedding's today? No, that's impossible! I'm with Takaki now. He's marrying me! I'm not sure what exactly you think is going on here, but Takaki Oda isn't my fiancé. What? My husband's name is Shohei Sakuma. He works at the same company as me. No, you're lying! Just because you're upset about me stealing your fiancé again doesn't mean you can start telling lies! It's true. That guy isn't my fiancé. But Takaki said you and him are engaged. It was him who gave me your contact details. He knows lots about your personal info. Wouldn't it just be weird if he wasn't your boyfriend? Takaki Oda is my stalker. What? Your stalker? We met three years ago at a work drinking party my coworker invited me to. We happened to swap numbers there. Ever since then, he's been pestering me relentlessly. He went around telling people I was his girlfriend. And even though I wasn't, I'd constantly invited me out on dates. He even showed up at my house. He caused me so much trouble, I couldn't even block him completely because he was one of our clients at work. Huh? What? Wait, what? It was my current fiance who finally got him to leave me alone. I can't believe he's still telling people we're engaged. No, just wait a second. What's going on here? Basically, you've been deceived by my stalker claiming to be my fiancé. Me and Takaki have nothing to do with each other. He's nothing but a stalker, who you seem to have mistaken for someone else. Which means you haven't stolen my fiancé. What? That kind of thing actually happens? But I don't gain anything from this. This can't be happening. Yeah, I was so looking forward to seeing the look on your ugly, heartbroken face again. 
boring! Is that seriously the reason you went after my fiancé? Yeah. I just wanted to see the look on your face one more time. Since it was so funny the last time I stole Kenichi from you. You really are despicable. I feel embarrassed just knowing we're related. Well, whatever! The company Takaki works at is much better than yours. And he seems like he has money, so I think I'll marry him anyway. Huh? What are you talking about? He's unemployed. Huh? Isn't he one of your company's clients? No. He's a delusional liar. His stalking escalated, and he showed up at our office one day. He went on a rampage at reception and broke quite a lot of equipment. He got arrested for criminal damage and lost his job. This was all pretty recent, which should mean he's unemployed now. What? No way! Or at least, I haven't heard anything about him finding another job. Most likely he just lied to seduce you. Oh, and he's on probation. Whichever way you look at it, he's a dangerous guy. Huh? But what am I supposed to do now? We already got engaged! I already sent out the wedding invites! I can't pull out now! Whoops! You really outdid yourself this time. You got married to a stalker neat on probation! LOL. He's super clingy, so good luck getting rid of him. No, no, no! I can't marry someone like him! Why didn't you tell me before? How was I meant to do that? I had no idea you were even getting married till before today. Anyway, you're not my problem anymore. No, wait, help me! Are you just gonna abandon me? I'm your little sister and I'm in trouble! Help me! Nope, I don't have a sister. I don't even have any acquaintances as trashy as you. So I don't know you. But look on the bright side. At least he'll never cheat on you. You'll get his full devotion. He is a stalker after all, lol. A scumbag, just like you. You're the perfect couple. Don't say that! Please, I'm begging you. I'm so sorry for everything, please! It's your own fault. Deal with it yourself. Anyway, I have a wedding to attend to. See ya. I hope you're happy together. I blocked Mako and got married with an intense feeling of satisfaction. Me, my husband, my parents, and my friends all celebrated together. And it was the best day of my life. My husband Shohei's super kind and he's always there for me. I'm so happy right now. I heard that Mako confronted Takaki Ota. And on top of being unemployed, she found out he was also in mountains of debt. And he'd taken it upon himself to write her name down as the co-signer. They're currently in the middle of a messy divorce. I lost count of how many times she called me and my parents begging for help. But we all ignored her completely. We had already cut her out of our lives after all. To think she was so obsessed with hurting me that she went as far as marrying a guy that dangerous. What a grade A moron. Tina, what are you doing right now? Why are you out in the middle of the day? Um, I'm at work as usual. Because it's a weekday. Good grief, you're still working? I've been telling you since forever to just hurry up and quit. A woman is supposed to stay at home after she gets married. Making money is the man's job. That's what I was doing when I was your age. My dear grandson Noah is still so small. It's not fair on him. Times have changed since then, you know. The cost of living is higher now, so it's difficult to get by on a husband's salary alone. And Noah's in elementary school now, so I don't have to see him 24-7. Do not talk back to your mother-in-law. There's no way my Jack's salary isn't enough on its own. Are you sure it's not just you being bad with money? You must be neglecting the finances because you're working too much. This is all the more reason for you to stop working. Even if you say that, you should quit your job and start devoting a little more time to learn how to cook. I tried the stew in the kitchen, but it tasted awful. Huh? Wait... Did you come to our house again? Yes. I had errands to run, so I stopped by on the way. But no one was in, so I messaged you. 
Just hold on. Did you get another spare key made without telling us? I told you to stop doing that. Do not enter our house when we're not there. Why not? It's my son's house. Besides, I have to conduct surprise checks every now and then to make sure you're not slacking on the housework. And just as I suspected, whatever was in the pot was absolutely disgusting. Inside the fridge was a disorganized mess too. Don't eat our food without permission. That's our supper. I can't let my Jack or little Noah eat anything that disgusting. I threw it in the trash, so make it again. What? You throw it away? You'll get ill if you eat things like that. The flavor was too strong. It had a weird acidic taste. And it smelled weird. So I threw it all in the trash. What? Are you joking? You threw the chicken stew I've been preparing since this morning into the bin? That's Jack and Noah's favorite dish. Don't tell lies. There's no way Jack would like something that disgusting. My tenderly cooked chicken. <sighs> what are you doing there? Did you just go there to throw away our food? Oh yes, I forgot. I'll be having a tea party with some friends this Sunday. I'd like you to bake us some confectionery for the occasion. Your cooking might be utterly hopeless, but you can at least do baking, can't you? Cakes, cookies, anything will do. I want you to prepare us something as spectacular as possible. There will be six of us attending, so be sure to make lots. What? You want me to bake you something? No, I can't. I have plans this weekend. I told you before, didn't I? Surely you don't have plans first thing in the morning. If you get up early, you'll have it done in a jiffy. Please start thinking for yourself for a change. Cakes and cookies can't be made in a jiffy, can they? They take time. Anyway, I'm busy on the weekend. Can't you just buy them at the store? But I already told my friends there's going to be a wonderful handmade confectionery. I can't give them from a shelf now. Anyway, I'm counting on you. Toodles! Not toodles. I can't and I won't. Remember the last time you forced me to make something? You didn't even pay for the ingredients. I don't have as much free time as you think. Listen to me. I will not be making you anything. Hey, Jack, your mom decided to let herself into our house again. She threw the chicken stew I made in the trash. What? Seriously? Damn it, that's my favorite dish! Didn't you take the spare key off her? You said you were going to talk to her about this. Well, I know, but she insisted it'd be more convenient if she had a key in case anything happened. Then she started crying and said, Don't be so cruel to your old mother! I felt bad. I didn't have the nerve to take it off her by force. Don't let her play you like that. Do you have any idea how many times she's thrown my dishes in the trash? It's such a waste, and the food expenses are going through the roof. If she doesn't cut this out, we're going to be in serious trouble. Come on, can't you see that she's lonely? My dad's out at work all day. You and I might not be that far away, but we do live separately. Surely it's fine if she comes over to keep herself busy now and then. Is it fine for her to illegally enter our home because she's lonely? Is it fine for her to help herself to the food I slave over a hot stove to cook? Complain that it's disgusting and throw it away? Is it fine for her to order me to bake cakes for her at tea parties without giving me a single penny for the ingredients? I'm sick of you being manipulated by your selfish mother, using loneliness as your get-out-of-jail-free card. Fine, I get it. I'll make her see sense somehow. I'm not interested in half-hearted vagaries like make her see sense. Go to her house today on the way home from work and get the spare key off of her for real this time. If she dares shows up here next Sunday, I'm seriously gonna lose it. Do you understand? I get it. I'll get a hold of it somehow. I'm very disappointed in you, Tina. I requested that you make some confectionery, but no matter how long I waited, nothing came. So I took it upon myself to go and collect it. No one was home, so I let myself in. What on earth was all that? There was a feast laid out on the table. You even prepared cake. 
despite not making what I asked you to. To think you live in such luxury while my Tom is out working. I won't allow it. On top of that, I tried a bit of everything, but it tasted awful, so I threw all of the food on the table in the trash. I took the cake for myself, though. Do you know what day it is today? Huh? I'm asking if you know what day it is today. Did you know when you did it? What do you mean? I don't follow. It's Noah's birthday today. What? The feast laid out on the table as well as the cake were all for Noah. I told you I had plans, didn't I? Those plans were to invite Noah's friends over to celebrate his birthday. The reason I'm not home right now is because I went to meet his friends at the train station. I can't believe you managed to throw all the food in the trash and steal his cake in such a short space of time. No matter how much you might not like me, to ruin Noah's birthday like this is just cruel. You're the worst mother-in-law on the planet. It's Noah's birthday today? What? You don't remember your own grandson's birthday? You're not old enough to be going senile. No, I knew it was sometime this month, but I didn't think it was today. If that was the case, why didn't you tell me beforehand? You're the one who cut the conversation off before I had the chance to tell you. Didn't Jack explain this to you? He was supposed to be going to your house. I haven't heard of such a thing. And why on earth didn't you invite us to Noah's birthday party in the first place? I did plan on inviting you, but you told me you were hosting a tea party. So I thought you could stop by another time and didn't say anything. Plus, your husband's at work. More importantly, how do you plan on making up for this? I had to cancel Noah's birthday party because of you. And after his friends went through the trouble of coming. What? Why did you have to cancel it? You could have ordered takeout for the food and grabbed a cake from the store. There are many alternatives. At least no one would have to eat your terrible cooking that way. What are you talking about? Noah can't eat regular food or cakes. You know that, right? Huh? Why? What? Are you seriously telling me you don't even remember Noah has allergies? Allergies? Noah? Since when? Since he was born. I told you as soon as I found out he had them. And since he can't eat milk, eggs, or shrimp... I made today's cake especially made to be allergen-free, the food too, and since some of Noah's friends are gluten intolerant, I went to a lot of effort to make sure everyone would have something to eat. It's going to take a long time to remake everything from scratch. Noah was so looking forward to finally being able to eat the same things as his friends. I didn't know that! You never tell me anything! I think what you mean is that you don't listen. You do nothing but talk about yourself. You don't even care about things that could put your grandson's life in danger. I can't let someone that dangerous near my son. So you better not come to our house until his allergies have gotten better. I'll be changing the locks. What? Why? I don't want someone who doesn't understand Noah's allergies coming and going as they please. For now, all you've done is throw our meals away. But who knows whether you might decide to cook him something yourself one day that contains stuff he's allergic to. Anyway, Noah's upset that you ruined his birthday. He burst into tears and shouted, I don't want to see Grandma. Well, I didn't know about his birthday or the allergies. Surely it can't be helped. I'm Jack's mother and Noah's grandmother. Surely my son's house is the same as my house? I can't accept you banning me from entering. Give it a rest. You trampled all over what was supposed to be a fun day for the kids. All for your own satisfaction. I've tolerated you throwing away my food until now, but you're not getting away with what you did this time. If you illegally enter our home one more time, removing house and cutting all contact with you, depending on the circumstances, even divorce with Jack isn't off the table. I'll take Noah and move in with my parents. What? Divorce? Divorce? You can't do that? I'm serious. It all depends on your attitude from here on out. I'm sorry. I apologize. Please forgive me. Please make Noah understand that I didn't mean to. I will not do such a thing. If you want to make this up to Noah, how about thinking for yourself for a change? As for me, forgiving you, I'll make that decision depending on whether I see change in your behavior. I have to go see Noah now. 
so excuse me. Toodles, mother-in-law. My mother-in-law immediately rushed over to apologize with cake and hors d'oeuvres in hand. But as usual, everything contained allergens. So we refused the food and took possession of her spare key. She stayed outside the front door shouting, causing a racket for a little while. But Noah, who was already in a bad mood from having his birthday ruined, took one look at her and shouted, I hate grandma! And threw a screaming fit. She must have tattled on me to Jack straight away. Because when he got home, he started complaining at me, saying, Don't make my mom cry. But I swiftly lectured on him on how it was entirely his fault for not taking the key off her in the first place. And when I said, Should I take Noah and break off all contact with you? He started panicking, got on his knees, and apologized. Jack's completely on my side now. And his mother, afraid of being cut out of our lives, stopped coming to our house out of the blue. Now, with an appropriate degree of space between us and the in-laws, our lives are comfortable and stress-free. The birthday party was successfully held the following Sunday. Everyone came over to join the celebrations, and Noah was finally able to eat the same cake as his friends for the first time. I'm so relieved that his birthday party didn't end up being a sad memory. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time.